Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a show how to build a Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes is kind of like if you're familiar with uh, AWS, it's kind of like building your own AWS. It's uh, kind of an open standard for those types of systems, um, but it's a little bit more flexible and it can it can run on all sorts of different platforms. Um, you're not tied to Amazon. Um, but it's, it has all sorts of different components that you can do with it. But what we're going to do today is we're just going to do some really basic stuff just to get your feet wet with it and kind of help you, uh, uh, help you figure it out. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that you have a, 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 a Linode account. All right, so Linode is uh, probably one of, the better, um, one of the better cloud hosting people. Uh, they're low cost and they're really easy to use. Everything that they do is super, super simple. Um, so you can sign up here and you can get your account. I'm going to assume that you already have an account when we walk through this. All right, so um, uh, so Kubernetes is based on containers. And um, I, sh I should probably do a separate uh, set of tutorials on containers. Uh, but um, so we're going to assume that you know how to use Docker and how containers work. So we're gonna, what we're going to do for this example is we're going to deploy a cluster of containers. Um, I've got this container, just a simple web server, and all it does is say hello from Docker. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like uh, on my local. Um, so if I do Docker run interactively, I'm gonna publish port 8070, because that's the port that this uses. If you click into here, click on latest, you can see it exposes port 8070. So I'm going to publish port 8070 to my local. Um, ah. uh, Johnny B61820 slash simple web server. And you can use this one too. It's a public image. Um, so that will run. Um, and uh, anyway, it's a very, it's very small container as you can see. It's super fast. It actually only has one file in the whole container. So now this is running. And so I can go to my local host and verify that it's running. Uh, host 8070. And it says hello from Docker. And that's all That's all this does. So let's say I want to run a whole swath of these behind a load balancer, right? Well, that's the sort of thing that Kubernetes does for you. It kind of helps you, helps you do that and provides infrastructure for it. And you can even write the infrastructure as code. So you basically have these configuration files that you can maintain via Git that tell all about your infrastructure, what images they run, how they link together, and that sort of thing. So that's what Kubernetes does. So we'll, we're just gonna do a basic bare bones uh, Kubernetes uh, install and deployment here. So the way that you do this is you uh, go into, so on Linode, uh, Linodes are the actual machines that you have. So you can just create an arbitrary machine if you wanted to. Uh, you have volumes uh, to store, um, uh, volumes will uh, store hard drives, node balancers or load balancers. Uh, you can specify firewalls. Uh, stack scripts are basically uh, auto build scripts, and uh, images are are predefined uh, are, are predefined uh, virtual machine images. But what we really want is we want uh, we want Kubernetes, and that kind of manages the whole shebang for us. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create cluster. All right. Well, we need to give our cluster a name. Um, so we'll just call it my test cluster. And a lot of things in Kubernetes, uh, the names basically lowercase letters separated by dashes. Um, so region doesn't really matter. I like, I'm, I, I like Texas, so we'll do Dallas, Texas. And Kubernetes version, we'll do the latest one. Um, so um, we have to specify the machines that we want to run our, our cluster. All right, so uh, for, uh, for our, our test system, we can just do shared CPUs because they're really cheap. So this is Linode, two gigabyte images, $10 a month, and we can have as many or as few as we want. Um, I think three is a good number. Um, I haven't really tested with fewer than three, so I don't know what that looks like, but we'll go ahead and add three. Um, so we'll hit add. So we're set to $30 a month. So now we can, uh, we can create the cluster and boom. We've created a cluster. Now it takes a few minutes uh, for the cluster to set up. 
And so you can see here's the interface. Uh, it'll be done when we get this cube config file uh, back. So here are the so here are the linodes that it's uh, allocating. It's provisioning these servers, and these will actually show up in our linodes list as well. So when we get here, um, they'll eventually show up. Now yeah, they're there. See, it's provisioning, um, and these guys are just offline. So uh, it'll also show in here, it'll show the statuses of these things being created. And um, so anyway, go back to our Kubernetes cluster. And here's our list of our cl clusters because you, you can have more than one. And we click into our cluster. Um, and again, we're waiting for this uh, cube config to be available. And once it's available, uh, then we'll be able to uh, log into our Kubernetes dashboard and take a look around. Okay, now we're back. Um, that took, a, I, I cut out the waiting. Um, it was about two or three minutes of, of just waiting time. And so we've got these machines that have now booted up fully. Um, we can find them back over here under our Linodes. We can manage the machines independently. Um, but really, we, we won't need to because they are all under our Kubernetes cluster. So uh, this has a cube config file, and you'll want to download this. And it just goes into your downloads folder. And then uh, to manage the cluster, you just click into this Kubernetes dashboard. And you click into that, and um, it'll ask you how you want to log in. Um, so all you... All you actually need is you need to hit this cube config. You want to log in with your cube config file that you just downloaded. And then you want to choose it um, from your downloads. I think that's the one. Hit upload and then sign in. All right. And now that now we're on our cluster dashboard. Um, so we can see uh, there's not much here yet because we haven't we haven't deployed anything. So most of this stuff is just empty. Um, but what we do have um, is if you go down here under cluster, we've got nodes. If you go into nodes, this is, again, our physical equipment. This is the actual machines that Linode booted for us. Now, of course, they're not physical machines. These are actually still virtual machines running uh, at Linode. But nonetheless, they, they basically are our physical substrate that the cluster will run on. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a service. We're going to add a, we're going to add a service and a deployment together. And this little plus um, will do that for us. Now we can create it from input. We can create it from a file. Or we can create it from a form. And that's what we're going to do. So um, we're going to give it our app a name. We're going to call it my test app. Uh, the container image is going to be that uh, image we just, we just were working on on our local command line. Um, simple web server and uh, so this is the the container image and it this should be a public image um, and um, so we can then say how many how many instances of this do we want to run and we can run as many as we want um, we're not limited to three even though we have only have three machines if we run four of them say uh, one of them will there be more than one running on one of the machines um, and then the service, we specify whether this is an internal service, uh, which means that it's only available to other parts of the cluster, or an external service, which means it's going to give us uh, a load balancer that's accessible from the outside. So we want to we want to access this web service from the outside. So we'll hit external, and it'll say, okay, well, what point do you want? Well, we want it to be accessible on port 80, but the actual port that's on the machine is 8070. Okay, so this is the port that we want from the, uh, this is the port that we want to actually hit uh, on the IP address, and this is the port that it's going to hit on each of our individual boxes. So it's basically going to forward to that port. And then all we have to do is click on deploy, and this is a little bug on the, that's in the interface. All you have to do is, is say yes. Um, so, um, anyway, this, again, this is another, uh, known error so you all you have to do is uh, click on deployments and you can see my test app was deployed um, so um, and then in services uh, my test app it's yellow so it's still coming up it's not done 
All right, so I waited for about a minute um, to get this uh, for this to be fully deployed. And you can see over here, we have external endpoints. And so if you click on this, um, this will give us uh, the actual service itself. Well, it's supposed to. And there, there it goes. Just took a while to boot up. All right, and so, yeah, so this gives us, this says hello from Docker, and that's from our container that we launched and is now running on uh, four different container instances on our cluster. All right, so now how does this, how does this cluster work? Okay, well, um, we should, uh, I should show you what this looks like. Uh, to do. So this is essentially what the, uh, what it looks like. So basically, what we did is we created a deployment, and this deployment uh, specifies like what container we want to, uh, uh, what container image we want to deploy, how many instances of it do we want, and that sort of thing. And the deployment will create a replica set, and that replica set basically has the same information. Um, and so this replica set, uh, so the deployment uh, controls replica sets, and replica sets manages actually starting the individual container instances. And each of these is known as a pod. Um, and the reason why it's called a pod and not a container is because technically a pod could run more than container, but they one container, but they usually don't. So um, so you can think you usually these pods are equivalent to being each container instance. So you might say, okay, well, why do we have both deployments and replica sets? if the deployments just create replica sets. And the reason is simple, is that if you want, let's say we wanted to uh, to um, go to a new version of your web app, okay? Well, what you do is you would set that on the deployment, right? And so then the deployment would create a new replica set. It would then tell the old replica set to, or tell the new replica set to turn on all its images. And when all those images are turned on, it would tell the old replica set to turn off all of its images. And that's how you would do uh, that's how you would go to a new version. So the, the deployment uh, handles uh, multiple replica sets that, that might be running simultaneously, they might be, uh, that might be coming up or down. Okay, so that's, so that, that's how you get the machines running. And then the service defines how you are accessing it. So it basically says, okay, well, this service is kind of a gateway to my pods. So I have the my test app service, and if somebody accesses the my test app service, it's going to round robin those requests to these different pods. And in this case, uh, my test app is also published externally. We said it was an external service, so it's also available via that external IP address that we clicked on. Now, notice that several of these things are named my test app, and that's because names are only unique within the object type. Uh, so we can have a my test app deployment and a my test app service and they're still distinct objects. So let's go look at that in the management console. Um, so for in our Kubernetes management console, so we have our deployments and uh, so our deployment is called my test app. Um, and we can click in and see, see additional information about that. Um, so here's the replica set. And we can click into that here, or we can go to replica sets, see the replica set. And I might say, well, why did I add this number? And that's because it might have multiple replica sets that it makes uh, as it changes versions and whatnot. So it's got to have the name of the app and those, and whatever uh, makes it unique as a replica set. So we click in here, and this controls pods, right? So we have four different pods running. Okay, and as I said, we only have three machines. So that means that one of the machines actually has two of these pods running. Um, so we can click into the pod and it will tell us what node that it's running on. And the node is the actual machine. Um, and so anyway, so that's how you, uh, so that's what those different things mean. So we can, so deployments, deployments manage replica sets and replica sets manage pods. Um, and then the services, um, this is what manages uh, logical services. 
uh, in the system. So anytime you need to reference something by service name, you create a service for it. So there's a standard Kubernetes service, uh, but then there's also a, um, this is the service we created, the MyTest app service. Uh, within the cluster, I can reference it using the MyTest app host name. Okay, so you basically get host names for each of your services. Uh, but externally, I can, um, since I created it as an external service, I can go to this URL and access it. So anyway, so that's that's how you get up and running uh, with a very simple Kubernetes service uh, that you can just do from the user interface.